the name of Jesus Christ, we welcome you to this time to celebrate, to covenant, and to bless. And we do this all remembering our health and our hope is in the name of the Lord, who made the heavens and the earth, Eric and Stephanie, and us. You may be seated. We are gathered here in the presence of God to join Eric and Stephanie in the sacrament of holy marriage. This relationship was created by God when he said that man shall leave his father and mother to unite to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. It was blessed by Jesus at the wedding at Cana and compared by St. Paul to the mystical union between Christ and his church. It is therefore not to be entered into lightly or hastily, but reverently and in the presence of God. Eric and Stephanie, as you stand before God this day, the vows that you take are sacred beyond words, and they reflect God's faithful, unending love for each of you as you seek to love each other. The security of your marriage will not rest in the rite or ritual of any church or in the word of any minister. The security of your marriage will rest in the purpose in your heart, in your character, in your steadfastness and your devotion to one another and your love for God. And so you come now to be united as husband and wife. Who presents this woman to be married to this man? Her mother and I. Glorify the Lord. 
as I was thinking about that today, behind you sits family and friends that have been a part of your strength this month. And then you are standing next to each other, and you have been strength to each other this month. And then I also thought about your trust here in your heart, in God's love for you through Jesus Christ and through his word is the anchor of your strength. I've heard that over and over as we've talked about this day. The words that Deacon Jim read this morning or this afternoon were words that you chose for today. Words of strength to you and words that God says to you in strength. As Jesus speaks in Mark, he points back to creation when God created male and female in his image. And God saw Adam was alone and he said, it's not good to be alone. I'll make a helper, a suitable helper, not just any helper, a suitable helper. And this word speaks of fitting together, and Jim is going to demonstrate the fitting together. He's going to hold his hands like that. That's the fitting together, a partnership where each person leans on the other and fits together to live out God's call, which is to take care of creation and to create and recreate. In the image of God, he created you, male and female, to care for each other and to bless creation. God says a similar thing in Ecclesiastes 4 that Deacon and Jim read. Two are better than one. There we see it again. Two keep each other warm. Tasks go better with two. One helps the other get up when the other's down. A two together are stronger together. Now you know you're going to face days on in your marriage like you had this week on Wednesday and Thursday. A little too much to do. Uh, unexpected things that came up like flat tires and plane reservations changed and cancellations. But God has given you to each other. Two were better than one on this trip. Strength for one another. And the waters that kind of washed over you those days Together, you got through that. So in the midst of the challenges of marriage, this Ecclesiastes picture, this, this picture from Mark, we see that God gave you to each other. And God says in the midst of this, a cord of three strands is not easily broken. He gives you himself for strength, and you already know that. But today, we remember that. So when you celebrate together like today, remember that he's with you here right now. And when you wonder what's next, like you did on Wednesday, he will be there for you. You know that. And Deacon Jim ran, read words about uh, 1 Corinthians 13, words about love. And in those words, God points you today to two key things to remember about love. One, he affirms that love is eternal. Other things that are important will fade away. They're temporary. But love that he gives us is everlasting, it's eternal, it's important. Many things will call to you, they're temporary. I know you'll keep your eyes fixed on what's important. And two, God knows that love is so vital to lasting relationships. And he defines it beyond words, because words are one thing, but actions are another. And so he defines love with words, patience, kindness, thoughtfulness, not easily angered, forgiving, persevering. Now these are actions that you probably noticed in each other as you began to know each other. And these are actions that drew you to each other, and they're actions that kept you together and helped you grow in love, and they will keep strengthening you. As we think about Wednesday, we know that as human beings, some days it's easier than others, to live those out. But again, these words not only describe the love God gives you to act on, but it describes God's love for you. And God is that way with you. And in that cord of three strands that Deacon Jim mentioned, God's love is patient and kind and thoughtful, always for you. As we end right now, remember you chose these words for today. I love that you 
chose these words. That's God's Spirit speaking to you to strengthen you today and every day of your life together. Amen? Amen. And I invite you just to put your hands out together if you would. And think about the cord of three strands. I'm going to put my hand over and Deacon Jim's going to put his hands there too. Lord, we thank you for the picture. A cord of three strands. You've brought Eric and Stephanie's hands together. Two are better than one. But your hand is over them. Bless them this day with this picture. That you are with them. Your presence. Your abiding love and power. And together we say, Eric, do you before God and these witnesses receive Stephanie to be your wife? Will you commit yourself to her happiness and her self-fulfillment as God's person and her usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve her in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and forsaking every other, be true and loyal to her own? So long as you both shall live. Stephanie, do you receive Eric before God and these witnesses to be your husband? And will you commit yourself to his happiness, his self-fulfillment as God's person, and his usefulness in God's kingdom? And do you promise to love, honor, trust, and serve him in sickness and in health, in adversity and prosperity, and forsaking every other, be true and loyal to him only, so long as you both shall live. Family. Healthy marriages involve community, family, friends, and church. And so as a part of our covenant today, we ask family now to stand and share in this covenant making that's going on. So if you're family, mother, father, grandparent, aunt, uncle, nephew, niece, cousin, any part of family, please stand. Would you like to turn around and take a look at your family? I think that'd be good. Let's just see all of them here. Family, will you receive Eric and Stephanie into your family and uphold them with your love as they establish themselves as a family within your own? And I invite you to say, we will, and to say that now. We will. Please stay standing, and now we ask the rest of the community here, friends, and anyone who's here that's been invited, you are a part of Eric and Stephanie's community, so please stand. And so, will all of you who witnessed this covenant between them pledge to hold them accountable to keep their vows, made this day before you and God, and will you respect their marriage, and will you sustain them with your friendship, and encouragement and prayers, even as you've already done that. And I invite you to say, we will, and to say so now. We will. You may be seated. Thank you. Good to look out and see. Now I invite you to face each other. Join hands. And repeat after me. I, Ira, receive you, Stephanie, to be my wife. I heard to see you, Stephanie, to be my wife. To have and to hold. To have and to hold. From this day forward. From this day forward. For better, for worse. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. Till death do us part. And this promise I make. And this promise I make. With all my heart. With all my heart. I, Stephanie, receive you, Eric, to be my husband. I, Stephanie, receive you, Eric, to be my husband. To have and to hold from this day forward. For better, for worse. For richer, for poorer. In sickness and in health. To love and to cherish. Till death do us part. And this promise I make with all my heart. Aaron, what symbol do you give of your marriage vow? A ring. A ring has long been used to seal the marriage covenant. 
The strength of its metal reminds us of the strength of your love for each other, and the unending circle reminds us of the vows that you take this day, our lifelong commitment made before God. And I invite you to put that on Stephanie's finger and repeat after me. With this ring, With this ring I pledge my love, I pledge my, love my, loyalty, my loyalty, and my life to you. My life to you. In the name of the Father, the Father and, of the Son, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. and Stephanie, what symbol do you give of this your marriage vow? And you may place that on Eric's finger and repeat after me. There you go. With this ring, I pledge my love my loyalty, and my life to you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. In a moment, Eric and Stephanie are going to go light a unity candle together. And as they move over to the sacrament table where the candles are, they're going to take two individual lit candles that represent their families and themselves. They're going to light one. And they're going to keep, leave the two lit because it's a reminder that God's brought two people together with their strengths to help each other be one. And then they're going to sign their marriage certificate. And then they're going to walk over to a special anniversary box that they have. And they're going to put into that special anniversary box that's going to be open in 10 years special vows that they've written to each other and the strength rock.
man and woman in your own likeness. Source of blessing for the married life. We humbly pray to you for this bride and groom who are today united in the bond of marriage. May your fullest blessing come upon them so that they may together rejoice in your gift of married life. May they be noted for their good lives and be parents filled with virtue. Lord, may they both praise you when they are happy and turn to you in their sorrows. May they reach old age together in the company of their friends and come at last to the kingdom of heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. In using the words in our program, let us pray together in the words our Savior gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Eric and Stephanie. You have made your covenant of marriage in the presence of God in community. And by your solemn vows, your joining of hands, and your giving and receiving of rings, we declare that you are husband and wife. Those whom God has joined together, let no person separate. You may kiss. Stephanie Morthens, and we invite you to stand and congratulate them as they're. 